So we've talked about enough. We didn't necessarily start the segment of, hey, guys, what went wrong? But we've talked enough about what, what the Chiefs didn't quite execute well on. So who who's our players of the game? I think it's I think it's easy that you go with Xavier Worthy as one of the players of the game. Mm-hmm. You force him in, he gets two touchdowns. There's a busted coverage. He gets that amazing long catch. I, I think that's I think that's pretty fair to the point of that that's expected to go from there. Um I think you also have to say Rashi. He was he was the number one guy all night. He did a lot of the legwork. Travis Kelsey had what? four targets, less than 40 yards. It's going to be hard for him to get a thousand yards back this season. Uh, I think those two are the obvious ones. He doesn't, he Uh, doesn't need to. No, he doesn't. He's getting up there in age. Let's, let's keep the longevity. Longevity is important. I think those two are the obvious ones. So outside of those, uh, who, who would you guys give it to? The offensive line. Straight up. The Nothing offensive better. line, and then the other one. If you, if I have to give it to a specific player, probably Travis Kelsey. He didn't. He wasn't Travis Kelsey on Thursday. He was. He was a regular tight end. He had to block his ass off. He got a couple targets, and he did his <laughs> fucking job. Well, he was. Well. He was a set piece. That's what he fucking was, and he played his role perfectly. And I, you know, for a guy who's had a career like Travis Kelsey to. You know, he probably had to put some of his pride aside halfway through that game. Or maybe he just knew, you know, going through camp being like, man, fuck, I don't have to catch 10 fucking passes, you know, against the Ravens tonight. I can, I can, you know, block, do something that you don't really see me do as much as other tight ends do. I'm not going to say he doesn't do it um, or do, does it to the effect that other tight ends do. You know, he's not George Kittle, you know, pushing a guy 15 yards down the field and into the into the uh, sideline, but you know, he, he got fucking down and dirty this week. He got his nose up in there, down in the, down in the trenches and did his fucking job. So I would go with either the offensive line or Travis Kelsey. Personally. Is, is Travis Kelsey moving from his era of being the Clay Thompson to Steph Curry, to, 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 Steph to Patrick Curry. Mahomes and Steph Curry. Correct. Is he moving from? Don't Clay say Draymond Thompson. Green. Don't say fucking Draymond. I was going to say Andre Iguodala. Okay, thank God. Give him if some you had credit. said Draymond Green, I would have jumped through the screen and tackled <laughs> you, dude. I fucking hate that guy. I don't like uh, <laughs> Draymond Green either. Is he moving more into the era of Andre Iguodala being kind of that? Like, the I think so. Role? He can show up when you need him to. Uh, he's going to take some of those double teams. He's going to be able to to be that defensive kind of player. Like he he doesn't have to do it all. He's just there in a good support role. I totally agree. Only, totally only agree. if you're sticking to the Warriors team, like I'm, I'm gonna yes, try to yes. give Travis not... Kelsey a better role player that that was that's like a Hall of Fame level type guy. Like I don't, I don't know. Okay, if yeah. Andre Iguodala. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, only talking about the Travis Warriors. Travis Kelsey <laughs> is is one the one of the greatest tight ends to ever play this fucking game. So he probably is. Know. Let's be don't honest, he probably don't is. Don't um. Um, um, I was thinking almost like Chris, Chris Bosch, but that would, that's fucked up. That's not a good comparison. I feel like either. <laughs> so, not that the Iguodala comparison was fucked up, but I, for a second, I was like, like that big three. And I was like, nah, that would be disrespectful. So the... <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I think that's, I think but I'm with you though. I think he is, I think he is moving, but I, but I think that has to do with his age, obviously, but like, we mentioned at the very start of this fucking episode, the weapons. He doesn't have to catch 10, 12, 13 passes a game with two touchdowns to help the Chiefs win. Yep. He just doesn't fucking have to. It's it's weird to think that we just won back-to-back Super Bowls and we're sitting here week one thinking we have a more complete team than we did last year. Yeah. You guys were so <laughs> fucking insane. nervous last week. It just, it's just, oh, my God. The yeah. Chiefs is still the fucking Chiefs. Just, and And, and – Real quick, I, I'm going to go ahead and go defensive side of the ball for my player of the game because I felt like he was on his shit and the rest of the defense better better start playing up to his caliber. Chris Jones is that dude. And like we said earlier, any other quarterback besides Lamar Jackson, he comes away with, you know, like damn near a handful of sacks. Like we mm-hmm. – we could see some crazy things out of him this year. We have a full season. He didn't miss week one. There's no contract – you know issues like we get a full season of chris jones barring injury 
I'm excited to, and he's not, I'm not seeing the fall off that I was expecting because Chris Jones was an animal on Thursday night. And I think, I think he could, he could, you know, push a sack, you know, doing it from the defensive tackle position would be hard, but like, he's going to have a decent amount of sacks and maybe, maybe surprise somebody and get that defensive player of the year that uh, he's been, he's been bragging about. He, He needs to get it. He needs one. I'm going to go to the defensive side with you because um, I feel like maybe maybe you're undercutting this guy a little bit. Maybe you didn't think of him. Uh, not that he deserves it over Chris Jones by any means, but he's one of the guys who consistently goes out there and does his job week in and week out. Uh, and his name was actually said quite a bit during the game, finally getting some recognition this season he deserves. Unlikely to be on, much like Nick Bolden, unlikely to be on the squad after the 2024-2025 season, Justin Reed, yeah. my player, one of my players of the game. He flew all over, uh, played very well in coverage, was not afraid to come up and tackle Derrick Henry, was not afraid to come up uh, against the guys like Isaiah Likely or Mike Andrews, uh, tackling much bigger guys than than he is. He was all over the field, dominant, dominant performance from Justin Reed. I'd be very sad if he's not a chief, but uh, I, I will get why he wouldn't be. And I think, I think he's the, he's the perfect kind of guy that's going to be able to pass on as much knowledge as possible to Brian Cook and Chamari Connor and the guys that are coming up underneath the him. Knicks. Yeah. I, I, th- I think he, he's his play, you know, Followed by example and just the fact that he's like he's he's super smart and he he should I feel like is the type of guy to be able to help teach help coach almost uh, in practice and it you know on the fly in games you know they're the the guys playing underneath him are gonna pick up just like that extra almost like Madden experience with the fucking mm-hmm. mentor on the field in Justin Reed so and that's the interesting thing too about the Chiefs is this doesn't happen a lot teams that. Uh... If your safety and your quarterback or corner, sorry, cornerback are leading the team in tackles, teams don't win a lot. Uh, and you guys found a way to do that because Jay Reed had nine and then Jalen Jalen Watson had eleven. And those were your two leaders. So I think those are um those are big things to to uh you know give give the flowers to the defense and specifically the secondary. You know, I mean you take away what three tackles from each of those guys? You were looking at probably more rough touchdowns. Night. Yeah, rough you're looking night. at a rough That's night in Kansas City, and our <laughs> year two's attitude about the season <laughs> is completely different. <laughs> yeah, shout out, shout out, shout out the guys who we have bringing them in and then coaching them up. Obviously, Brett Veach and the rest of the scouts for going out and knowing that hey, we don't necessarily need to go out and get a Jalen Ramsey or a. Marcus Peters when we let him go or or letting Legarius Sneed go. We don't need to go out and, and pay these big name guys, but also to find the right guys with the right attitude who aren't afraid to hit, who aren't afraid to go out there and be team players. And then for Spags mm-hmm. to go out there and put them in the right position, coach them up. Uh that's a that's like one of the biggest pieces to this team. Uh and you can't you can't manufacture that uh without them consistently in and out season in each season. Um what we we struggle big time if they aren't the warriors out there on the field uh that we need them to be if you don't have dbs that'll tackle galen ramsey good luck <laughs> he's hit or miss on that a lot of you know he's got he's got some good highlights of 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 hits and younger tackles. younger uh, younger jalen ramsey rookie, yeah. rookie contract jalen ramsey mm-hmm, mm-hmm. He's part of the interception generation though when it comes to dbs all they care about is interceptions most jumping of them routes do. and not getting yeah. hit most of them do anyways, but yeah. That's about <laughs> it. Should we, is that, is that all? Is that all for this one? I don't know, man, I'm, I'm very excited. What are we most excited? Well, obviously we've got a breakdown, uh, a preview show for the Bengals. Uh, what are we, what are we most excited for given the first week of the season uh, uh, for the Chiefs, just for the season, not not for the Bengals, but what what are we most excited for for this season? Why the fuck are we gonna ask a Raiders fan what he's most excited about? Well, nobody's sh- fucking asking him. I'm asking yeah, you. No, yeah, no, he he was looking at you. He wasn't looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, dude! Like I said, we for somehow, some way, the way this front office has has worked its ass off to put to assemble our our Kansas City Avengers. 
uh possible possible new name choice if 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 uh the uh political correctness crowd ever comes for the chief's name uh Kansas City Avengers yeah yeah yeah, yeah. you know I know you guys like it you're just, you're not you're not reacting very well right? you would have to be so good for so long <laughs> to be the Avengers. but anyways anyways how in the hell how in the hell have they turned a back to back Super Bowl winning franchise into a better team that who the hell going to stop us who the hell going to stop us from getting this fucking three peat, Doug? That's it's, what I'm most so excited wild. about. I, I I couldldn't stand how much they brought it up on the broadcast. It was three peat, three peat, three peat, and everything. It's gonna be like that all season. About. It is. It is. Up, it's it's like, like we go. We gonna do this shit. We about we to do. do this shit. You guys are at like you guys are at like game. Uh, it would be like game forty. Like like uh, of of ju- like the 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 um. Here's here's my a uh, uh, comparison I'm about to use. So Joe DiMaggio, 56 game hitting streak. By the time he was at game 40, it was being talked about literally every fucking day by every single news source across the entire country. Okay. You guys are at about game 40 right now. Like this is all that is going to be talked about until the playoffs, and 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 until you until you do it, that's all that will be talked about when it comes to Chiefs football. So just get ready, and it's only the pressure is only going to build from this point on. The pressure is only going to get bigger and bigger and bigger the target on your back is only going to get bigger and bigger bigger. but the way this offense looks like the the pressure doesn't feel there no it doesn't Mahomes doesn't have to force the ball to Travis Kelsey on a third and 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 13 plus yeah to to like move the ball anymore you're right we've got a new they they might not feel it but it's there it's fucking (laughs) there man we've got a new slant boy I we we've, we've got every position covered. We've got a slant boy. We've got a tall tight end who can just go out and do whatever he wants with his whatever. own backyard bullshit routes. Mm-hmm. You've got Xavier Worthy who can just run the streak route the whole time. And then let's not forget, we're going to bring in Hollywood who could do that and also run every other route imaginable. And then you've got Juju who's going to be that mid level guy who's Travis, just going to go Travis out and get Kelsey all the fifty fifty balls. Going to be like a true outlet this season in the mm-hmm. sense that he's going to be he's going to be the main target when Pat is running for his life when pat is out of the pocket and moving moving around oh yeah travis is just just gonna be hanging out in the flats just like oh look at me there's no one within 10 yards of me ha 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 first down or just like noticing that the play is breaking down and then starting to streak across the field like like Uh travis kelsey just knows how to how to play with pat when he's on the run there is easily and it will happen but there is no team that is safe in using any sort of double coverage against any weapon on this Chiefs team this season. You can't double cover anyone. Yeah, like unless you, you guys go to like a three tight end look or something like that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, but even then we have no problems throwing the ball to Noah Gray. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or, exactly. or rookie Jared Wiley, who's uh-huh. supposedly the next Travis Kelsey. Like somebody's going to learn one of these days. So, somebody's going to find out. But if you start, if somebody's going to go out and double team, uh, and then we're just going to hit the wide open man running all the way down the field every single time. Mm-hmm. Beautiful. It's pretty fucking exciting. This is the most confident I've ever been as a Chiefs fan. I would like to see of, Nick uh, Bolton's play get better. That's the one thing I'm looking forward to. For, as, but, as a as a non-Chiefs fan, what I'm looking forward to is to watch Nick Bolton level up. I hope he can level up. At this point in his career, he can find a way to level up and to remain relevant as as the fucking guy, as as the as as the general of that defense. So need, that's that's I my that's Chris my Jones. tidbit for you guys. I need Here Chris Jones to put up an A D season real quick. I need him to get that DPOI. And uh, yes, we need that. Like, come on now. But it seems like TJ Watt, unless he gets injured, might be that season. Yeah, for him. he might. We'll cover that in the next show. Join next us time. back for the NFL show as we break down all the happenings from week one. Uh, we'll also be back next week as the Chiefs take on the Cincinnati Bengals, who have been odd awful in week one, uh, losing to the Patriots. But you'll hear about that more uh, later on this week. Until next time, go Chiefs. Go Chiefs! Peace out, fuckers. Repeat.